So Kurogiri's back, and uh, he's not the only one. What's up? It's True Hero, and welcome back to another My Hero Academia chapter review. So Boku no Hero Academia chapter 374 of the manga will discuss everything from Kurogiri waking up to Dobby returning to action and twice as back? Well, at least his clones. Let's dive in. Chapter 374 opens where we left off with present Mike and Spinner looking at Kurogiri, or Shirakumo, and it's apparent that Kurogiri has regained some consciousness. Shirakumo has probably left the building. As we'll see and discuss later, Kurogiri plays a central role in this chapter and probably will play a central role in this battle moving forward. But pause here for present Mike. It must be really hard knowing that his friend Shirakumo is pretty much gone, and if he is coming back, it's not today. We then flash over to good old America and there's a meteorologist. She's giving us a weather update on huge clouds coming out of Japan, and she says that they could actually make a landfall in North America, and that their primary cause are giant heat waves. Oh no. Guess who? She goes on to describe the butterfly effect, which is basically, you know, the flapping of butterflies' wings. <laughs> the flapping of butterflies' wings, say in Japan, could create hurricanes in Florida or something. Some minuscule action on this side of the world can have grave consequences on another part of the world. There's the example of the glowing baby who is the first human to have a quirk, and now there's this huge war between heroes and villains in Japan. There's also remarks that All for One, because of this principle, is such an amazing person. Oh boy. While I agree that All for One is certainly a remarkable historical figure in the universe of My Hero Academia, let's not forget that at this present moment, he's currently dying. So the flapping of butterflies' wings will come from a few people in this chapter, but none more central than Kurogiri. We then move over to Kamino, where a giant fire and heat wave has appeared, heralding the reinvigoration of Dobby as the black sheep of the Todoroki family rises like a phoenix again. Shoto makes the understatement of the year here, how can you still move? That's right, Dobby's up again and he's burning hotter than ever, and if you look at these pictures, you can basically see his muscle, like the tendons in his arm, almost his bones. There's not much more to burn up here, so yeah, Shoto is right indeed. How can Dobby still move at this point? In an effort to distract Dobby and divert his attention away from Burnin and the other heroes, Shoto taunts Dobby about his body burning up and wasting away, and he notes that, even Dobby knows this as well, he won't have time to travel to Gunga, eliminate heroes, and then come back to defeat Shoto. But will he actually have to travel? Speaking of impact players, as Dobby's levitating using Endeavor's fire feet technique, he gets a call from Skeptic saying, Hey, travel time won't be necessary. You just want a vacation to UA, all expenses paid for. Just then, a portal opens above Dobby as the Phoenix flies into Kurogiri's warp gate and teleports over to Endeavor and All for One. Kurogiri is the MVP, okay? Do your thing, King. Like he said many chapters ago, and during the last chapter, I am the protector of Tomura Shigaraki, and you can bet that Kurogiri is going to fill that role. I think it's safe to say that the butterfly has started to flap his wings. How are you guys liking this? Do you like that Kurogiri has woken up? Comment down below. What do you see happening now that Kurogiri is awake? What type of wild card does he now present for the villains? I'll discuss the possibilities later in this review, but for now, the thing that stuck out to me most was that this gives Shigaraki and any other villains in Aizawa slash Monoma's sightline a chance to use their quirks. If you warp Shigaraki to London and he starts to use Decay or any quirk and he suddenly warped back to Japan, back to UA, I don't think Aizawa can cancel that. I don't think that's how his erasure quirk works. 
And let me know in the comments, what are your plans if you were the villains with Kurogiri? Speaking of our poor friend Monoma, he's still trying to keep his eyes open even though every attack, every impact, makes it virtually impossible to do so. Also, there's the water component with Manuel bending that in his eyes. I mean, oh, tough it out, Monoma. It's like trying to have a staring contest with the wind, and the wind is never going to give up. And you can't cause it to give up because you can't fight. So, but Monoma accepts his destiny and he has a part to play in this historic battle. As Deku continues to fight Shigaraki in the background, because don't forget, that's still going on with all this, a portal appears behind Aizawa, Monoma, and Manuel. Hey look, it's your friend Present Mike, and he brought your other friend, Shirakumo, but uh, I doubt it's going to be a class reunion. Kurogiri warps through to UA, and thanks to instructions placed in Nana's hand by All for One, which he was holding in the last chapter, he knows exactly what to do for the villains. If you were tired of Kurogiri or hearing about the Shirakumo, Aizawa, Present Mike backstory, this was not the chapter for you, and Kurogiri isn't even done yet. Next, we see Dobby come through one of Kurogiri's warp gates, right to where Endeavor and All for One are fighting. And with one word, he describes both of those figures perfectly. He says, Daddy. Uh, I don't know what to say at this point. I mean, if there was one thing that every My Hero Academia fan, I mean 100% of them, every single person could agree on, it was that we wanted to see Dobby Toyo Todoroki vs Endeavor. And now the moment is almost upon us. I mean, what do we have to get through? A few chapters of Kurogiri, Deku fighting Shigaraki now that Kurogiri has arrived on the scene, maybe some shenanigans with Monoma, and then Shigaraki uses his quirk. Who cares? We almost are at the point of seeing Dobby vs. Endeavor. Let that sink in. You just can't help it. That's okay. <laughs> if there was one major impact Kurogiri has had in this chapter, it was moving Dobby to Endeavor because Dobby could be the emotional and mental block for Enji Todoroki and could flip the tide for all for one. While there probably will be some amazing fireworks between these two, don't forget that Dobby's body is still burning away at an incredible rate. Not that Endeavor wants to see this, this could certainly be a very emotional and painful moment for him to see Toya Todoroki burn away in front of his eyes, but as I am hyped up for this fight between Dobby and Endeavor, don't forget that whatever happens between them will be very short-lived because Dobby, like all for one, is currently dying. So expect him to go out in a huge inferno, but a blaze of glory nonetheless. Lastly, two twice clones, how fitting, come through the warp gates with Dobby. And now Toga, the blood-hungry girl, with the power of the sad man's death, now has the ability to unleash her fury and get her revenge. So let's get this straight. In My Hero Academia Chapter 374 alone, Kurogiri wakes up and starts warping people, Dobby creates a huge explosion, is rejuvenated, comes back to life basically like the Phoenix King he is, and warps over to fight his daddy, Endeavor, and if Hawks wasn't sweating enough on Thanksgiving, he just gets word that two Twice clones have come through Kurogiri's gates and that there's an army headed straight for him. I mean, past the gravy, because My Hero Academia stands eating well tonight. Hawks immediately, and rightfully so, identifies the threat and says, hey, we need to kill those two clones right now. They pose the biggest threat to hero society basically besides Shigaraki, maybe even more at this point, which we'll get into in a bit. But for the rest of us sitting back and enjoying this calamity, we get to see what would happen if Hawks had not gone after Twice. If any of you had ill feelings towards Hawks about how he handled Twice and how he basically killed him, well, you're gonna see why he did that, why Twice was so dangerous, and why that was necessary to bend the rules a bit. Because now, Toga has an army. I'd like to discuss all the possibilities that Kurogiri now presents in his return to the battlefield, and of course, 
now that he's warped a few other players back into the battlefield like Dobby and Toga. But for now, first, let's focus on Kurogiri. I think the biggest thing is that he gives the villains a do-over. He can warp Shigaraki out of danger. He could warp all for one back to a lab where Dr. Ujiko, who could be warped, could save him or prolong whatever state he's in that's causing him to decay with Ares quirk. He could warp Shigaraki, like I said, to London, then warp him back as Shigaraki is activating a quirk so that Monma can't see this. And of course, Shigaraki could decay the entire UA coffin that has been constructed. So the possibilities just for Shigaraki and warping villains to different locations is pretty much endless now that Kurogiri has resurfaced. Then there's the Toga aspect to all of this. I really see how Horikoshi raised the bar and the stakes here. Oh look, Shigaraki's invincible, he recovers, he takes no damage. Oh look, Deku gets his new transmission quirk, now they're evenly matched. Well, you can take that and all the progress of those chapters and throw it right out the window. Because Toga, with these two Twice clones and her ability as well, has the resources to create an army of whatever she wants. And now with Kurogiri re-emerging, she can then move that army however she wants. So she could create clones of Shigaraki to distract Deku. She could create multiple Kurogiri so that they always have warps and a way out. She could create clones of Shigaraki, move them faster than light to, say, London, have them all use a quirk so that they can't be nullified by Azawa or Monoma, move them back, destroy the entire UA coffin, and, you know, conquer the entire world. I don't see how you stop Toga with all her allies. She could create multiple Dobby. She could possibly save Dobby from whatever's going on with a Twice clone. She could save all for one from the effects of Ares' quirk if she warps him back to a lab and warps Dr. Ujiko and they work out the science. Uh, to me, right now, I mean, yeah, Shigaraki is a huge threat and you need to keep his eye, your eyes on him, Monoma, but Toga's number two. Twice is number two, literally. So it's an army that can be whatever it wants, is as powerful as you want, and can move wherever it wants. I mean, there's no way to conquer that. Lastly, there's Dobby vs. Endeavor. Now, whenever we get this, I don't know, but my prediction is that Dobby will burn away, but not before doing massive damage to Endeavor and potentially getting in his head, slipping him up, and killing him. Then Dobby returns to Shoto, and Shoto must deal with the fact that Dobby, or his brother Toyo Todoroki, just killed his father, who he was on the path to forgiving. So, if you thought it was emotional before for the Todoroki family, get ready. But guys, that's what I have for you. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. What are the possibilities? If you were directing this movie, what would you have Kurogiri do? What would you have Toga and her army of twice and herself do? And of course, what would you have happen between Dobby and his old man? As always, guys, if you enjoy these My Hero Academia chapter reviews, consider enrolling at UA today while it's still standing and Shigaraki still can't use his quirk. Until next time, plus ultra.